Hello and welcome to our tutorial. This will be a nice quick one. We're just going to look at uh, shooting at an enemy and having um, the enemy have a health bar and having that go down. Um, that health bar go down when uh, when you shoot it. So we've already set up sort of the shooting mechanism, uh, which is a raycast, and we're going to look at the uh, mechanisms for using raycasting to damage an enemy. Now. If you were using a projectile, if you were stan instantiating an object and using a cannonball or a bullet, you'd probably do it a different way. You'd tag the bullet and then you'd say on collision, you know, if I'm hit with the object that has the tagged bullet, then, you know, minus my health. But this is actually is easier in many respects. So uh, let's just set this up. So I'm going to make a, a cube and the cube is going to be my non-player character. Um, and we'll just scale it up on Y a little bit. So that'll be my bad guy. And obviously we'll replace all this shortly with some decent arse, um, arse, <laughs> art assets. Um, and I'm going to place this here in front of my character so I can, like the player, so I, can, I don't have to do much when I play the, the game. And then I need a, a health bar. Now I have made a health bar here. As this little green bar and I will show you why I have done that. So if I take this here and I scale it on Y, you can see it scales towards the middle. So I'll just jump into Blender here very quickly. I'm just going to scale this and scale it on Y. What we want is an object that goes scale on Y, but it doesn't get smaller into the middle, that it goes from this end to that end. Like when we were making the slider for the health bar that was on our UI. So with a very simple tweak here, so I can just select the end of this and go Shift S, cursor to selected. And then in object mode, I can say set origin to 3D cursor. So now when I scale this on Y, it'll scale towards the origin of it. Now I could do that in Unity, um, but it's a bit of a pain to do in Unity. So I've just made this health bar in uh, Blender and I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here and there it is and you can see it's got an enormous uh oh i never applied the scale to it it doesn't matter so we'll say it is on x uh i know we'll leave it at 20 and y we'll say 50 and on z we'll say 20 as well will we um so let's not do that let's say on y it's 20. And then on, I don't know, so on Y it should be 50, yeah. And then on Z we'll make it, I don't know, 10. Doesn't really matter. And, and I'm going to rotate this. So that it's pointing at me. Okay, so you can see this is the, the point, the pivot point. So in fact, what I want to do is I want it to be looking that way because I want it to get smaller from right to left. And there's no reason for it not to go the other way. Just convention says every game you've ever played, that's where the help bar has gone from right to left. Okay, so that's our help bar. It's not beautiful, it, 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 but it doesn't matter. It's just to um, illustrate the point. So what we want is we want this, as I shoot this guy, I want this to get smaller and then if it reaches the end, they all disappear. So let's have a look at that. So I need to put a script on this character here. So I'm gonna put my, um, um, I'm gonna put this script on, if I can open that folder, um, non-player character control. And it's looking for a health bar and it's got a, the health bar has a Y value of 50 and I'm gonna put that in there. So you can see I've done this earlier and I know what I'm doing or pretending to know what I'm doing. So this is it here. So let's just have a very quick look at this uh, script. So uh, this is sort of unnecessary. So we'll just comment it out. Um, Oh, actually, no, it's not unnecessary. We'll leave it in. We'll leave it in. It's it's what actually makes it disappear at the end. So what we're... It's unnecessary to the the green health bar moving. 
but um, so let's just walk through this nice and quickly. So first of all, uh, we need to declare the object that is the health bar. So this transform, this moving object is my non-player character health bar. So that's where the green mesh, the health bar will be dragged and dropped into. Uh, this is our health. So we're just declaring our health to be 50 and that coincides with the scale on Y. So that's just convenient. If the scale on Y was one, then this would be one and we'd be using different numbers, but you know, it's 50. So let's work with 50. And down here in void update, we say, if non-player character health, if this 50 goes below zero, let's say if actually, if it goes below 10, if it goes below 10, then destroy the non-player character. And that's the object that this script will be on. And then this is how we change the size of it. Th this here is just, um, I'm minusing 10 off that number uh, to control this. So this actually has nothing, this line here has nothing to do with um, the actual movement of the green bar. So here I'm setting a, I'm going uh, scale change, new vector three, zero, X, Y, and Z, and I'm gonna minus that over here. So when I minus this, I'm minusing 10 basically, but only on the Y axis. Uh, and then I'm going health bar, or NPC health bar dot transform dot local scale equals itself minus this, which is basically minus 10. So it's quite a simple little script. There is minusing 10. Uh, like I said, if, if this was one, we'd be minusing 0.2. So we'd be just using different numbers. Um, to get it to work. And this will physically make it smaller. Uh, now we're using local scale and that's important because um, this character will move around. So we don't want it on a global scale um, because if we were to scale it say on Z but the character rotated, then it would you know get smaller on the wrong axis. So it's the local scale of the object. And this object here, you can see Z is up for this and Y is that way. Whereas globally Y is up and Z is a completely different axis. So you just need to find out what is the local axis that you want to move on. And then that has to then correspond with where this number lies. So if I wanted to get smaller on Z, I just put the 10 here. Nope, sorry, here. So it goes X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, so that's that bit. So that script goes onto this object, onto the non-player character. And as you can see here, this is, we, we drag and drop the health bar in there. So that's the first part of the script. That's it receiving um, the, uh, the message. And this is the message it's receiving. So when it receives the message, take damage, it runs this method here. Oops. So we need to trigger this method. We need to either send a message to this script or we need to somehow communicate to the non-player character to tell it when to do that. And Handley, because we're using a Raycast, which we set up in the last tutorial, um, we, we have that all ready to go. So in the last tutorial, we had these two in. We'd said basically when I shoot something with the tag ground, instantiate a bullet hole and play a sound. And if I hit something with the tag wall, do the same. And now I've just added one more uh, if to that. So I've said, if I hit an object with the tag enemy, so let's go in and do that. So we'll take our non-player character and give it the tag enemy. So if I hit an object with the tag enemy, it says, uh, well, first of all, I'm putting in the bullet hole. So now if this was a, an organic object, um, I, the, or the bullet hole would look different to the ones we have up here for the, um, the walls and stuff it would be like a wound from a, from a bullet. So I'm just using the one we already have for simplicity and I've, um, made it, um, a variable. And that's because when I instantiate it, it'll become sort of a clone of itself. So like, I won't actually be adding this in when it's added in Unity, be called bullet hole wall clone. So I'm saying, so whatever that object is that you instantiate, um, down here, I'm saying, so this object, so the, the bullet hole, make it the child of the object that you hit. And that's very important because otherwise what'll happen is I'll shoot the object and I'll leave a bullet hole and I'll shoot it again and leave a bullet hole. 
and then I'll shoot it a, whatever a fourth or fifth time and I'll kill it and it'll delete itself but it won't delete the bullet holes they'll just be floating in space which would be kind of bizarre so if we want the bullet holes and the object to disappear simultaneously we make them the child of the object and then when the object is deleted it will delete all its children as well so that's what this line is for and then finally this is how we send the message so we're saying when we hit a collider uh, and keeping in mind we've already tagged we've said so we've already established we've hit the enemy so we're saying hit dot collider dot game object get component from this script and that's the name of the script that's on the non-player character and on that script run that method and take damage is the name here so let's see it working uh, I'm gonna press play and here we are so I should be able to shoot the ground and then shoot the wall and then I'll shoot the non-player character and you can see the green health bar going down and then one more time oh so I have to go to zero so and you can see that the bullet holes are gone the health bar is gone and the character is gone and that's because if we run it one more time when I shoot so you can see if you I'm just gonna hit escape here and move my mouse so over here we've got the non-player character we've got its health bar and we've got the cloned bullet hole so these are now children of the non-player character and then when this deletes itself all of this will go as well excellent so that is how we um, in using ray casting how we would have a kind of a game with a character with a health bar and have the health bar diminish as we shot the character and then when you know we had uh, hit it enough times the character and all of its um, children would disappear all right we'll leave it at that